Week 6 Fantasy Biggest Heroes and Biggest Losers. Let's start off with the biggest heroes. Chris Godwin, this Tampa Bay Buccaneers offense has been cooking. Baker Mayfield right now is the second best quarterback in fantasy football. He had a Jameis Winston performance, but Chris Godwin, you know, he was eating the secondary for the Saints. 11 catches, 125 yards, two touchdowns, and a 55-yard touchdown. He's looking like he's that go-to guy for Baker Mayfield, the number one option. And yeah, just a deep play threat. Playmaker, get the ball in his hands. He's going to have success. So moving forward, I think this Buccaneers offense, they're clicking on all cylinders. Baker Mayfield's showing no signs of slowing down. He's looking like he's picking up right where he left off from last year. Might even have a better year this year. I think the offensive coordinator has done a great job so far uh, positioning this offense and the pieces they have. The run game's going well too. Rashad White, you know, him getting hurt, probably a blessing in disguise because Tucker is nice. Um, Bucky Irving, 81 yards rushing. So this offense for the Bucks is going to continue to put up high volume production and Chris Godwin's going to benefit from that. So if this is your guy, keep him in your starting lineup as your receiver one, receiver two, or your flex, whatever spot you got him in, keep him there because he's going to keep putting up big numbers like this. This is not a fluke. Joe Mixon, when he's healthy, he puts up a huge performance against the Colts. He had a great performance in week one. Joe Mixon had 27.2 fantasy points against the Patriots. Um, when he's healthy, the two games, Savage in 25 points. He's a top five back in fantasy football. The workload he's getting, Running the ball, 25 carries, 100 yards rushing, 100 plus yards rushing. In the receiving game, he had 30 yards receiving and a touchdown. So he's getting good work in both, you know, the receiving game and the rushing game. So yeah, be happy about this. The Texans also just traded Cam Akers away. So I think it's him, Damian Pierce, and number 33, the, the third string running back they have. They have a good running back, but Mixon is their lead guy moving forward. Damian Pierce will probably get a couple carries, but Mixon... He's getting a heavy workload, and he's making the most of it. Dangerous piece in this offense for the Texans. That run game, that run game for the Texans has been great so far, and with Joe Mixon, I don't see it stopping anytime soon. This is a guy that you could trust as your RB1 moving forward. Now for my unsung hero, I have Sean Tucker, Bucks running back. I am very pleased with my performance uh, yesterday. After every game on Twitter, you'd post a tweet saying, I'm very pleased with my performance and always put up his stats and stuff. It would just be a funny thing he would do for every game. Love seeing it every time, but now he can continue that tradition in the NFL. Um, put up 34.2 fantasy points, um, had a huge day, 14 carries, 136 yards, a touchdown too. So with Rashad White, if he's banged up and he has to miss a little more time, miss a game or two, um, Tucker and Bucky Irving, you could see Tucker get a couple carries. With the production he put up in the last game, I would see him getting maybe 10 carries. All it took for him to have a big day was 14. So, so this production, I don't think it's fluky. If he gets enough carries, he can make the most of it. This is a guy I would add, but I wouldn't put him in the starting lineup or the flex yet. I would add him, see what happens, see where it goes. Stash him. Maybe, who knows, Bucky Irving, knock on wood, doesn't get hurt. But if he does, this is a guy that could have a big impact for this Bucks offense potentially soon. Now for my losers, Zach Moss, 0 0.5 fantasy points, had a fumble, 13 total yards. Not his best performance, and Chase Brown made the most of, you know, the times he got the ball. Had a touchdown, rushing touchdown. Uh, Chase Brown has been out producing uh, Zach Moss. He has more rushing yards than him. Zach Moss has more receiving yards than him, though. But with the fumbling, that really is going to separate the two. It seems like Chase Brown has won the job, and Zach Moss, we could see his production reduce in the next couple weeks. So if you have Chase Brown, I would be encouraged by this, but if you have Zach Moss, I would potentially be looking to move him, trade him. He's still projected to put up like 11 points. I would potentially cut him for another need on your roster or maybe move him in a deal to get more improvement on your roster this week. Uh, Zach Moss, not really confident in him moving forward. And like I said, Chase Brown looks like he's taken over this job. He's been more productive. So we might have seen the end of Zach Moss's RB1. And it's really not been his show at all this season. It's really been RB1A, RB1B. So Chase Brown, though, separating himself. Not a good look for Zach Moss. Huge loser this week. Dak Prescott was my other loser. He put up 3.22 fantasy points. Just a terrible performance for him against the Detroit Lions. And anytime he's going up against a really good team, a championship contender, if you will, 
you know he's going to put up a goose egg, a terrible performance. So keep that in mind. I still think he'll be a good fantasy quarterback this year. Might be a quarterback you want to start. Uh, just be mindful of matchups and have a guy, a good backup, a Matthew Stafford, uh, Aaron Rodgers, maybe Drake May. That's a guy you pick up because there are some games when you need him to, he's going to have a performance like this and it's really going to hurt you. And you don't want it to come during fantasy football playoffs. So be mindful of that. Matchups do matter with Dak Prescott. But in the next coming weeks, I expect him to have big performances and bounce back from this. But be mindful. Some people thought the NFC North was going to be the worst division in football this season. They thought it was going to be as bad as the NFC South. 